Okay, so our second speaker for this evening is the lovely Kim Barnard. Kim and I have a bit in common, both being personal trainers. And Kim is going to tell us how to live a life of purpose. But let me tell you a little bit more about Kim to start with. So Kim provides coaching for health conscious individuals who feel lost and aimless. I've been there a few times. Helping them find purpose, get clarity on their direction with step-by-step -step guidance, support and reassurance in an era of well-being and consciousness. Finding your purpose is something Kim feels passionate about because it was her story too. And I think we're probably going to hear some of that tonight. And it took a chance meeting with a life coach when she was working as a PT to realise the only thing holding her back was herself. I think there might be a bit of a theme going on here tonight. So, Kim, welcome to the stage. How to live a life of purpose. Hello, everyone. So, as Lisa introduced, uh, my name is Kim, and I actually have done something a little bit more different. I am now working as a business and mindset coach for wellness professionals. So, really, what I want to ask you guys is imagine living a life, well, having a career, really, that you absolutely loved and getting paid for that. Imagine feeling fulfilled and really happy within your life. That's what I'm going to talk to you guys about tonight. I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to live a life of purpose. So what... Basically, what I'm going to be talking to you guys about is why having purpose is really important. And then I'm going to take you through a very basic exercise, because I love interaction and I love getting you guys thinking, about how to get clarity on your purpose. So before I actually start, what does purpose mean to you? What do you guys understand by purpose? Anyone? Reason, reasons to be here or reasons to get out there? Or reasons yeah. To Anyone else? When you catch yourself like daydreaming about things, that's kind of like a way you can find your purpose. Isn't it? Yeah. And how many of you feel that you're living your purpose or that you know what your purpose is? Oh, above average. <laughs> it's a good room. So really, why is having purpose important? Having a purpose is important because it gives us a healthier outlook on life. It makes us more resilient to stress. And doing something that you feel passionate about leaves you feeling happier and healthier. And let's face it, a little bit more positive and driven in whatever it is that you decide to do. And studies have actually shown that having a strong purpose has a positive impact on our health and our longevity, you know, the longevity of our lives. And that includes lowering your risk of heart attack and stroke. So I'm quickly going to talk to you guys about the blue zones. And for anyone who doesn't know what the blue zones are, these are areas within, well, within Earth, within the planet, that basically have an above average number of centurions. So there are five places on the Earth. Does anybody know where they are? Japan? India? No. So we've got Japan. Greece, Sardinia, Costa Rica, and I'm forgetting one, California. So there are towns within these five places. And the reason that I basically want, that I'm mentioning this is because I'm particularly interested in one place, and that is Okinawa, Japan. Because one of the reasons they say they live for such a long time is because they have a sense of purpose, because they have a driving force. And they call that driving force Ikigai. Has anyone heard of Ikigai? You have? Brilliant. Anyone else? Brilliant. Okay. So Ikigai, they describe as basically your driving force, the reason you get out of bed, as, as you said earlier. So research actually shows that people who have an Ikigai live happier, healthier, and longer lives. And that's not to say that things like community, movement, and various other things don't have an impact on the length of our life, but this is something that they obviously say does. So it's actually really interesting to note that our ikigai, our purpose, can change throughout our lives, as I'm sure many of us 
will feel that has done. So like I said, I'm going to take you on a quick exercise that I like to do with people that I work with to actually find some clarity on what your purpose is. And it's based around the Ikigai model, the Ikigai exercise. So it starts with four questions. What are you good at? What do you love? What does the world need? And probably what most people think about, what can you be paid for? So if anyone is interested in this, then feel free to grab my business card. And I'm very, very happy to send you this exercise. But we'll get straight into it. So what do you love to do? What do you love to do socially, personally? And just have a think about it now. What are all those things that you enjoy doing? And I like to actually go through this with a series of questions because I think some of these questions don't come up for us. We probably don't know what we love doing, or we probably have resistance around some of these questions. So think of a time that you were probably at your most happiest. And when you have that, that thought in your mind or that scenario in your mind, what were you doing? Who were you with? Where were you? And then think about when you were a child. And when we're in that childlike state, we don't, as you rightly mentioned, have all of those beliefs or things that hold us back. What did you want to be when you told yourself that you couldn't be those things? When you had no inhibitions, what did you want to be? What did you dream of being? And finally, what could you do all day that would leave you feeling energized? Now I'm going to move on to the second question. So what are you good at? And really, that's reflected around what your strengths and your talents are. Now, for a lot of us, I think we get to the point that maybe we, don't, we can't recognize those things ourselves. They're very subtle to us. But things like being a good communicator, having a good sense of humor, being a good listener, being artistic, all of those things are your strengths and your talents. And yet, we don't really use those things, or we consider that those things can be part of our career, our purpose. So what are you guys good at? Or if you struggle with that, like many people do, in actually identifying when they're in more of a negative mind frame, what do people say that you're good at? And if you're still struggling with that question, then I want you to do this. I want you to go out to five people, whether they're your friends, your family, your colleague, and actually ask them, what do you think I'm good at doing? Because I think, like Lisa mentioned, you know, it's by having that list and by looking at these things that other people think that we're good at that we start to recognize our own strengths, whether we are able to see them or not. So moving on to what the world needs. And basically, this is all around focus about what we feel that other people need, whether that's our neighbors, our friends, our family, or even people that we don't know. So what do you feel that these people need? What needs do they have that aren't being met? And what could you give them that would give them more value in their life? So reflecting on, obviously, what you're good at, what you love, this is really the part that everything starts to come together. So taking those two things into account, what can you offer people that would meet their needs. And so again, moving on to the final kind of phrase of it, so what can you be paid for? Which is probably the most important part, at least I know for a lot of the people that I work with, this is where they want to go first. What is something that you can offer, whether that's a service or a product, taking into account all the things that we talk about, that you can offer people that they'll pay you for? And really, it's when we start to piece together these four questions, when we start to have that overlap, that we get to that central point, that, that sweet spot, that you find your purpose, that you find your ikigai. And I'm going to be honest here. This isn't an easy journey. 
at least for not a lot, you know, not for many of us. And really, it's all about the experience. The more we do, the more we experience, the more we learn. The closer this takes us to finding out what that thing is for us. And I don't want you to worry about whether things are going to work out for you, whether things, whether you're going to succeed. Because it's by trying something new, it's by stepping outside of our comfort zone that we actually start to get that feedback. We actually start to see those things that are good for us. I am keeping to time. I'm making sure I've got that there. I am going to run over. <laughs> so one piece of advice, and I'm almost done. So explore your mindset and your beliefs. Because really, they will determine where you go. And at some stage, that little voice that we all have is going to pop up and it's going to say, you're not good enough. You don't know how to do that. You're never going to run your own business. So it's really by exploring all of these beliefs that we then can start to see the triggers. We can then start to see those things that we need to be aware of. And ask yourself, if you didn't have any of those beliefs, then what would your life be like? What would your life look like? Thank you, guys.